Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, GCRB Kraus. Can you believe it? It's yet another Bumblecast. I, I can't stop them, Ian. We, 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 they, they, they become more and more numerous as the time goes on, actually. It's like, nope. it, 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 they, they just keep going. They keep coming. Sometimes they're every day, even. It's like, well, how, how? How 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 is this a self perpetuating thing now? I don't know, but we do not have the luxury of time to question the questions. We can only answer them. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then let's I guess start answering some of them because we got a lot. These come from our patrons over at Patreon.com/slash/Bumblecast, Kofi.com/slash/Bumblecast, and our YouTube members. Let's get started then. Fine, I suppose we can do that. This one's from Windstar Osprey. How old were each of the Setting Dawn pirates, Shellbreaker, Abyss, Bristles, Blade, Opal, and Dive? One of the blogs, including the Sonic News Network, mentioned that Abyss is apparently 28, and Blade looks to be about 4 or 5 years older than Razor, with Opal being about the same. Bristles appears to be over 50, while Dive is a young teenager or preteen, and Shellbreaker looks like he could be anywhere from 1 to 10 years older than Abyss. That's my observations, but is there an official age list, or are they in the same intentionally ambiguous club as Doctor Dead as a Doornail Starline? Oh come on! <laughs> don't be mean to don't be mean to Starline fans like that by reminding them that. Coming from you, big oof. Sir. I you know I feel bad for the Starline fans though. They got their uh, favorite taken away from them because you're uh, a horrible monster. Well, true. <laughs> But that's neither here nor there. We're talking about pirates. Arr. Arr. Um, I honestly didn't remember, so I had to ask Aaliyah, who helped me put these the characters together. Pretty much anything vaguely Meropus related is largely her brainchild. And we didn't have set ages for most of the crew. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just give vagities. And she's like, no, 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 no. Vagities are no good. People want answers. I'm like, okay, so what do we do? So here is the semi-official, can't really argue against it, put it in the wiki if you want, names and ages for the crew. Uh, Captain Shellbreaker, we're going to say, is 39. Abyss was confirmed as 28. Uh, Bristles will say 42. Uh, Blade, 23. Opal, 21. And Dive at 19. Alrighty then. Sure. It works for me, I guess. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't argue with that, or can I? I mean, I could, but I don't know why I would. And you could if you wanted to. But yeah, I, I don't want to. So there. Here's a question from Twilord. If Tom Bombadil and Big the Cat traded places, would anyone notice? Counter question. Have you ever seen the two of them in the same place at the same time? Hmm. 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 Big hmm. jolly fellow. Appears in places that he shouldn't be. Unimaginable power incredibly endearing somehow has a huge cult following regardless of having z almost zero impact on the plot mm. both purple i mean come on mm. okay I, I, hmm. Hmm. this is this is way too much this is way too co coincidental i don't think it's coincidence at all dun, dun, dun. who can forget that famous line that tom Bobadil says frodo where are you <laughs> What about Froggy? Yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. they're basically the same word. Basically, yeah, Frodo and Froggy are basically the same person. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Small, green, running into peril, <laughs> possessing dangerous godlike objects. There you go. <laughs> I've never seen them in the same room together either. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> Here's a question from the internet person. The newest Tales tube came out recently, and I'm a bit worried. You don't have to answer this if you can't, but is IDW a parallel universe to the games, or is it still in the game canon world? Still game canon world. Okay, for now, till something changes, because inevitably you know it will, Ian. <sighs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. I have to point it out. now, I'm on the committee that will see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> for now. For now. You won't live forever. <laughs> Just you wait. I'm going to find the one ring and swallow Chaos's tail. <laughs> we'll see who's mortal then. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Does he know? Does he know? Nobody knows. <laughs> Things could change in a big, in the, in the moment. 
in a flash, in a snap. Literally, a snap. And all of a sudden, half of Sonic's world is gone. <laughs> Here's a question from Supreme Psycho. So, possible worlds exist in Sonic, right? But what about impossible worlds? For example, a world where 1 plus 1 equals 3, or where certain things don't exist or things are different. I'd say it can, as it's all possibilities, but what are your thoughts? Can impossible worlds can exist in Sonic? I mean, you can't disprove it. So, <laughs> could, if that's what you want to believe, sure. Could they? I don't know. There was that world that Cal and Vertical were from. Ver Al and Vertical. Horizont Al and Vertical. There we go. Yep. Yeah, that's sort of a weird world. I don't know if it's impossible, but it's definitely a very strange one. But that was, you know, over there somewhere. <laughs> very minor regret, but I always wanted to go back to their dimension and introduce a third character, Diagonally. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always thought they were so weird. What I've heard, what I really found weird was not that they were, they weren't necessarily weird to begin with because it was the tone of the book at the time. But the fact sure. that they got brought back later on <laughs> was the weird part. <laughs> did not expect these guys to come back, and I really did not expect them to become giant mech robots and fight each other. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, that, that, that's a thing. That's a thing. It sure was. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I'm su just surprised you didn't bring back antibodies. Even I have my limits. <laughs> you can't tell me you didn't think about it, though. Oh, I'm sure John Gray brought it up at some point. Oh, I, like, I mean, no, obviously. I have my limits. <laughs> ooh. Ooh. Oh, well. <laughs> Here's one from Scurvy Pirate Dog. Time for some silliness. Wait, no, you, you Scurvy, you, you should know this show is nothing but silliness. We all know that one of the things that Knuckles is the most known for is to be the very strong guy. But he's not the only fictional character who's famous for being the strong type. So, just for pure hilarity's sake, what would movie what would Sonic Movie 2 be like if we replaced Knuckles the Echidna with Popeye the Sailor Man? Just Knuckles. Nobody else. <laughs> Everybody else is the same. But we replace <laughs> Knuckles with Popeye. I think it would be pretty much the same. <laughs> for a large part. Like I don't know why Popeye is traveling the dimensions and happens across Robotnik, but Robotnik was, you know, a manipulator. He's a jerk. He would convince Popeye that this strange animal that is somewhat like the Jeep, only not really, is a threat to mankind. And and so then you'd get the prerequisite fight between Sonic and Popeye. Sonic would manage to get the upper hand. It looks like Popeye's down for the count. Then what's that up his sleeve? Oh, look, no. there's the can of spinach. Oh, no. And now you got hedgehog paste. <laughs> and then uh, and then the movie's over. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, they would reconcile, of course. Robotnik oh. would be proven to be the villain. And then, uh, you know, we have the big moment where Supersonic catches the Death Egg robot foot and pushes it back. But this time. It's just a little too much. Not even Supersonic can stop it, and here comes Popeye. <laughs> yeah, I am, and that's all that I am. Wow, pow! <laughs> Knocks the whole thing over. I was going to say, punches him out of the, into the stratosphere, into space. <laughs> and that's how we get the death egg in movie three. <laughs> and, then for the st and then for the stinger, you know, you have the big klaxons going off, and the steam billowing out, and the capsule the shadow rises up, and that's when Bluto steps out and goes, finally. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, what have we done, Ian? What is this? What is this world turning into? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, I finally found you. You're a, a fake sailor. <laughs> fake sailor? I think you're the fake sailor around here. Oh, let me, let me uh, make them make, make those words. Something into Porky Pig. Yeah, I know. You're, yeah, and it's going to say, now you're going Porky Piggy. You're doing Porky Pig on us. Oh, well, it's funny. <laughs> uh, now I'm imagining Porky Pig as Popeye. That's that's funny right there. <laughs> I, 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 I am what I am. When I, that, 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 that's all that I, that I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, question from Saving Throws. 
This may be out of your wheelhouse, but even if it's your head cannon, I'm wondering what you think. Jimmy the Motobug the Badnik, the trusted steed of the hard, hard-boiled heavy rider. How do you think he got that way? Is it the writers doing the Phantom Ruby, perhaps, or vengeance? <laughs> um, given that we see a almost hot rod esque version of Jimmy later on, I'm inclined to believe it's Phantom Ruby shenanigans. <laughs> I don't know if there's an official statement one way or the other, though. I think he's pretty. He's pretty. He's pretty rad. He's pretty cool. I didn't know he had a name though. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's cool. He should. He should come back. I want I want to see Jimmy again. Here's one from Rock a Million. Can we please have Tails interact with more of the game cast aside from Sonic and IDW? I know they're brothers and I love their interactions, but I'm getting sick of Tails never getting to interact with anyone else in IDW. Please let them interact with Cream, Silver, Blaze, etc. And I mean meaningful interactions that show off their personalities as well as strengthen their relationships. Yeah, sure. All right. Here's one from Pickly Pack. This may stem from a misunderstanding of copyright law, but I... Probably will never know unless I ask, so here we go. Ian, you've stated before that characters originated from the OVA will likely never return because Sega does not own the rights to these characters. There is one thing that commu- confuses me, though, that being the hat that Knuckles wears in the OVA. To my knowledge, the hat originates from the OVA, yet it appears in some current media. Why is the hat clear to make future appearances, but not the characters? Well, here, here, here I can answer this for you. Plausible deniability. You'll notice the hat does not exactly match. It's not exactly the same. It's just enough, different enough. It's inspired by. I'm more hung up on, did I say that the OVA wasn't owned by Sega? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember that, but my memory is garbage, so. Nah, I mean, yeah, and there's the whole Q&A list I uh, could probably go through and look, but I don't think I said that. And if I did, either A, I was wrong, or B, I've forgotten the reason I was right. But Or you've meant something else and they interpret it that way, or something? Possibly. I, mm. they're not, we're not going to see the OVA originals any time soon because Sega just doesn't want to use them. Right. They don't like to use past incarnations of Sonic, period. You know, that goes from OVA to X to Adventures of whatever. Ignoring classic, because that became its own thing because it got super popular and made them money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think it's just that simple that they just don't want to use them. I would imagine that as a licensed thing, they should have ownership of the characters. I mean, there's another licensed thing where they apparently don't have a lot of ownership of certain characters. Mm. But... I think this is a slightly different situation. I mean, I'm I am no legal expert by any stretch, so I can't say with authority one way or the other. Mm-hmm. As for the hat, I uh, probably even let, let's even for the sake of argument say that Sarah and Old Man Owl and all that is somehow locked behind weird copyright nonsense. You can't copyright a hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. But I mean, maybe like the very specific design, but then you can't really use it anywhere else because it goes on knuckles. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't download a hat. Yeah. What What is the appeal of holding on to the? <laughs> Depends on the hat. I, I mean, what would be the point of fighting and retaining exclusive ownership of this hat design that can't be used anywhere else? You know, it's ah. Uh... <laughs> and it's as you said, the incarnations of the hat have changed. In media, so I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you can't copyright Sonic with a leather jacket. <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> do not shake the bee's nest, please. <laughs> it's a hornet's nest, you know that. <laughs> don't shake the stingy bug nest, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's one from Noni. As the least evil slash most good member of Team Hooligan, what is a day in the life of Bark like? I imagine it's full of reading and training and sparring and more reading and training and then turning on every single fan he get his hands on because he's just too bloody hot. Why did he leave the Northern Circle? Ugh. Mm-hmm. Does he is a does Amy is Amy nice to him? Does he hang out with Amy like on the down low? Not, <laughs> he, he doesn't admit it to anybody, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure they're like pen pals or Cause something. Because Amy's nice. Amy's nice. She's nice to everybody. Or at least she tries to be. Here's one from Mr. M Turbo. 
In the final battle with Solaris, the characters state that Solaris exists throughout all of Diamond Space. The three super hogs managed to defeat him, but how exactly could they manage to perform that? Obviously, super forms aren't omnipresent across all of time and space or have the capability of it. So were they only able to defeat Solaris because he broke the timeline in the events of 06? Did Solaris create some strange area of effect around him in that battle that allowed everyone around him to be simultaneously in the past, present, and future? This question really makes my head spin a lot. But you already got it. Like, as as you progress through the final story, time is falling apart. Reality is unraveling. And once you get to the final, final boss fight, you're in what is left of reality. You are in the miasmic soup that Solaris has rendered past, present, and future. Uh, time is almost meaningless. At uh, okay, but what happens in the game? Because that's what happens when you just when you're the person playing the game. That's what happens to the person playing the game. What happens in the game? That's what are you talking about? That's the story of the game. Oh, I thought you meant like as you play through more of Sonic 06, time starts to fall apart until you end up in some sort of miasmic reality when you get to the end, when you get to the final boss, because Sonic 06 causes reality to break down by being a glitchy mess. It's 2023, man. <laughs> T- taking pop shots at those sixes janky nature is a little stale it's okay I-, I i get what you're going for i do i really do you try it. you try it. old star uh-huh don't patronize me unless you're going over to <laughs> patreon.com slash bumblecast if you didn't i would yeah <laughs> All right, here we go. Mini hats. If Sonic can run so fast and is always traveling, then hasn't he been everywhere there is to see on Earth by now? Will he ever get bored of visiting Green Hill at least six days a week? (laughs) I know I am. (laughs) Um, The world's a big place, and there's only so much ocean he can run across before, you know, he either falls in or some random orca tries to eat him. So I imagine there's still some places he hasn't gotten to by virtue of he just hasn't been there yet. Or if it is anything like me on the Breath of the Wild map and looking at charting your course and it's like, oh, I went back to this exact same spot 20 freaking times, but I didn't even touch that acre over there. Why not? So, <laughs> and he's not like constantly traveling. He takes time to relax. He takes time to chill out. He gets distracted saving the world and fighting Eggman. So, and he's only like nebulously teenage. That's only so much time. Mm-hmm. Man, hating Green Hill Zone is like wanting Shadow to die these days. <laughs> so old, it's so old hat. <laughs> I say is the person who wants Shadow to die. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I was creative or interesting. <laughs> but you're consistent. I will give you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only want him to die because it would be better for his story and better for everybody else. All right. <laughs> Here's one from Liam B. This is our last question before we take a break. Hey, Ian, did you ever have it decided whether or not you were going to use the 30 years later arc as the canon future, as in the prime future? Was it something you were on the fence about, or did you decide it was only going to be the future for another zone and the prime zone's future would work out differently? I never intended X years later to be the prime, the official future, because it makes no narrative sense to do that. You lock in future events and characters and yeah. completely rob the present day of any peril or in- intrigue. Sure. There's a question of how do you get from point A to point B, but we're not reading Sonic the Hedgehog for him in his golden years. We're reading Sonic the Hedgehog for Sonic the freaking Hedgehog. Never mind that the approval process for that in the long term would be a nightmare setting. So yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Everybody except for one individual was in agreement that it was a possible alternate future type thing. Yeah, it, there's really no reason to do that for a perpetually ongoing licensed book. Like, that was the whole thing. Like, it's not like you're going to ever actually get to that point anyway. So it doesn't make a difference. But that's just me. Now, if this was like someone's original story, like they're personal project that narrative conceit could be used in a really interesting way because you would see things in the future and you would see things in the present and wonder okay how do you get from point a to point b 
and then anything that was nebulous in the future, like a character being absent, like, does that mean that they don't make it in the present? If they are in danger now, does that mean they're not there? And then they survive. And it's like, okay, well, then where are they in the future? And that would make an interesting bridge between the two. But you can't do that with a licensed book because you don't have control of the characters or even the narrative tone perpetually. You know, post uh, adventures era, things got rather silly for a bit. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I don't recall Sega ever being like hard handed on, you know, you have to match that tone in the comics, but it would have been within their ability to do so. Right. So we, we have, we enjoy a fair amount of latitude with the Sonic book, but at the same time, you have to be aware of what you're working with. It's not your stuff. You're playing with somebody else's toys and you have to be respectful of that. That's right. You should know. You should know. Take it, take that to heart folks. If you're going to play with someone else's toys, be nice. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more on the Bumblecast. We're back. We got this question from Jolie B. If you're at all familiar with Journey to the West, what Sonic characters would you cast in a storybook series game based on it? Obviously, Sonic would take the role of Sun Wukong, and I think Big's a perfect perfect fit as Sha Wujing. So, I am like cursory level, surface level, I know it exists. Journey to the West is becoming a very popular topic on this show for some reason. Questions. Yeah, I should sit down and read it and add yeah. that to the list but oh, yeah the monkey Con. i don't know <laughs> yeah uh, i don't know enough about it to really riff on it and i was tempted to try except i didn't know who shao jin was so i looked them up and it's like oh i know absolutely nothing about journey to the west hmm, we're gonna back off on that before i really display my ignorance Uh-oh. uh having read briefly the like cliff notes version of Shao Jin and his involvement. I can see the case you're making for with big. I am more inclined to say knuckles just because knuckles is treated as the more aggressive, uh, accidentally destructive and sometimes straight up ogre like in, and some side material. So maybe there, but I mean, you can almost make a case for Zamam, which is kind of weird to say. So, but that is just going off of my like five minute skim of the Wikipedia article. I could be super wrong and Knuckles would be better fitting for another character in it. But I I would need to read or at least research more on this to even begin to properly riff on it. Although I do agree, you know, having Sonic beam into the book and pick up Sun Wukong's staff and become his uh, allegorical, his his parallel in the story. That makes perfect sense to me. I mean, overpowered, incredibly playful, comes up with new powers every now and again just to win the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I see that. That's easy. Yeah. Any others that you can think of? I don't know. I'm sorry. I really don't know anything about Journey <sighs> to the West. I mean, Monkey Con. You'd have to put him in there somewhere, but I don't know where. <laughs> well, Monkey Kong's already a really pale imitation of Sun Wukong anyway. I know, I know, I know. I, d- I just feel like, you know, as a little as a little bit of a reference. <laughs> Unless you make Monkey Kong Su Wukong, and therefore Sonic is his traveling companion, and Sonic is the counterpart for the Buddha. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh no 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 no! I feel like that's sacrilege. Just mentioning it. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Then there's always Alex Kid. You just use Alex Kid instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> silly, silly, silly. All right, we got a question from James. All right, it's time to settle a debate long before Goku versus Sonic. I'm, of course, referring to Sonic versus a longtime rival, the mustachioed plumber in shining armor, Super Mario. Who's winning this brawl and without power ups, and, with and without power ups and Chaos Emeralds? Well, if it's just raw plumber versus hedgehog, 
I'm inclined to say it's fairly even. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even going to say, eh, nine stock final destination play Smash Brothers, put it up both on CPU. No, that's, no, 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 no. If you take the, if you take their capabilities with each other, yeah. I mean, you look at what Sonic is able to defeat and you look at what Mario is able to defeat mm-hmm. and what they're able to achieve in each of their games. I, I could almost see it coming as a stalemate. That's, that's a rough fight. That's going to be toughy. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we're talking power ups, Mario. Okay, because good. Because <laughs> I was gonna, go, I was gonna argue Mario. If you, <laughs> you Mario's got way more ranged abilities. Yes, and depending on which incarnation, he gets at least two hits once he's had it. Mm-hmm. Whereas Sonic gets a shield, which gets like a hit. Now it might be able to absorb some of the abilities. You know, I could see them rifling through different powers in a running battle, but. I think ultimately, I mean, unless you're counting Wisps as powers, but even then, mm. that's just barely bringing Sonic into parity. I think Mario's got a better arsenal. So uh, my argument was basically Sonic needs to go through at least seven trials, tribulations, and everything to get the Chaos Emeralds to go super. He needs seven of them. Meanwhile, Mario just has to pick up the basic first power up in his that he ever encounters, and he's immediately super because he's you know Super Mario. The first one he ever encounters is the mushroom. That's what I mean. Uh, oh, I see what you're, that's, you're doing the wordplay thing. That's what I mean. He becomes Super uh, Mario. Uh, the first thing, the very first thing he does when he gets that mushroom, he turns from Mario into Super Mario. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So I think it? more towards your point, though, all Mario <laughs> needs to do is grab a superstar and <laughs> it's brief, but he's going to absolutely obliterate Sonic. And then now, Sonic. if Sonic has the emeralds, he's he wins. Like, even superstar Mario is going to only have a few seconds versus Sonic's minimum of 50 seconds. It's it'd be a glorious clash, but Super Sonic, I think, wins without really much of a debate so quick breakdown here's your death battle stats regular fight i call it a tie with items i'm giving it to mario with chaos emeralds it's supersonic all the way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right now you all argue in the comments down below about how wrong ian is and how he doesn't (laughs) give sonic enough credit or enough power and how that answer is boring and lame and then we'll just carry on (laughs) Invade Turbo Tunis has a question. So, on the recent Tales Tube episode, the multiverse is officially a thing in the mainline canon now. That's good to know, and a great excuse to make the everything is canon quote, well, canon. I've always loved everything that includes multiverse shenanigans, no matter how the trope has been overused. So my question is, judging by the pics of the alternate Sonics, especially the one with the sports tape and blue arms, is it safe to say now that the different medias of Sonic, boom, movie, etc., are officially a part of the Sonic multiverse? officially is such a strong word i mean tails is speculating that such a multiverse could exist which would very conveniently cover so many things that we thought we could reference and then ran into legal shenanigans at the last minute Mm haha so while we have no direct confirmation of a multiverse beyond you know blaze's dimension you know, Tails is just spitballing and having fun. It does seem reasonable that Boom and Movie and Sat AM and everything else would be part of some grander multiverse if Tails is accurate in his speculation. Tails knows what he's talking about. He's a smart kid. Yeah, he's he's a, he is intelligent. All right, here's one from Fang. In the recent Tales Tube, there's a folder on Tails' computer named Lego Ideas, meaning Lego is canon to the world of Sonic. My question for you is what themes do Sonic and friends collect? Is Tails a fan of the theme and story of Bionicle? Is Sonic a Ninjago fan? It's killing me to know! I think I'm probably being overly cautious here, but I think I have to abstain from this one for a little bit. Oh no. Oh no. Is this some sort of... And hashtag knowing smile moment? It is a hashtag thinks he knows something smile. <laughs> oh. Hashtag knows of things smile. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, Eggman collects the Star Wars sets, obviously. Obviously. And he builds, he builds, he has like mini death eggs, actually. Not death eggs, death stars. Well, no, they are death eggs because he changed the, <laughs> the design because oh, you yeah. can do that with Lego. <laughs> Bisonicles. <laughs> That sounds like something. That sounds like something M. Bison would come up with in Street Fighter the movie. <laughs> Bison calls. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Here's one from Dove. Ignoring combat, unless you want to talk about it. After all, it's your show. Who created the best robot? Dr. Light with Mega Man, Dr. Wily with Bass, Dr. Eggman with Metal Sonic, or Mr. Tinker with Bell? All seem to have some level of awareness. So which is the most impressive bot? I would argue Rock. Yep. Out of those, I mean, yeah. Like, Bass certainly has his own personality and motivations, but he's also very focused, I guess, is the kindest way to put it. Yeah. Um, likewise with Metal Sonic, although I would say he's a few steps behind Bass. Metal Sonic is um, kind of like, he's more of a machine. He's more of a weapon than a... In, yeah. in an individual, unfortunately. I don't mean that to disparage him. I just mean that that's kind of what his intention and his use case is. Yeah, I mean, he aspires for more, but it's extremely contingent upon his coding and actual creation. Whereas Bass, who has more latitude in his thinking, doesn't really aspire for much. Nah. Just, I want to be strong. Belle is the closest, I would say, because she is her own fully realized individual. Mm -hmm. But Mega Man is working against the rather hard and sometimes ambivalent rules of robotics and is trying to grow and is pushing the limits of his programming in such ways that he can help others and become more than what he is while also not really deviating from his core programming. He's walking that fine line of doing more, but not violating what he is. Mm -hmm. And that I think is the most impressive thing. I mean, if we're really going to get down to it, Proto Man's more impressive than all four of them because he broke away from his coding anyway, and he's still doing his thing. Yeah. He's like rock, but cooler, which is basically what he was designed to be. But that wasn't the question. <laughs> he's rock, but cooler, you know, kind of like how Knuckles is Sonic, but cooler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but Belle is the most adorable out of all of them. Oh, by a country mile. Yes, as she should be. <laughs> yes, but definitely, yeah, it's Rock. It's Mega Man. Here is one from Domino. I mean, they're, they're all... Okay, hold on. I'm going back to that one real quick. They're all adorable, <laughs> guys. They're all adorable. But, I mean, Belle is the most adorable so there <laughs> all right here we got a question here from domino if sega eventually makes sonic adventure 3 and it's set in a modern story i feel like the game could have some trouble explaining characters like shadow as well as characters and settings that were introduced after the adventure series if you had full control over the game's story how would you go about making it feel connected to the previous adventure titles well here's the thing the adventure titles don't exist in a vacuum there's been 20 something years of story in between that they are the kind of beginning of that but the modern era has continued you can't just ignore you know the rush games or heroes or 06 or any of that just because it isn't the adventure games if you prefer one narrative over the other one style one focus that's your own thing i can't you know argue that but you can't just like throw out whole sections of modern sonic because it doesn't fit the adventure style. <laughs> I understand how it works. So if we get an adventure three at some point, it's just going to be the next chapter in the modern era story. And if we're returning to places, then it's going to be new to new players. And it's going to be familiar to older players. So what you do is you find the happy medium is characters being familiar with the terrain all you need is like an expository line of dialogue. Oh, hey, we have been here in a while. And there you go. <laughs> the, the new players understand that this is somewhere that the characters are familiar with and are returning to. And the older fans are like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Here we go. And that's it. 
Now, if Shadow shows up to do his thing, we don't have to have a long introduction of, oh, hey, Shadow, you're this half alien hybrid thing that was put in stasis for 50 years and tried to blow up the Earth. It's, hey, Shadow, what's up? I'm grumpy. And there you go. You have the dynamic established. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard to balance that. I, I definitely get the the desire to go in and explain who these characters are, but a lot of times you really just don't have to. It's not really necessary. But Wait, let's look at Frontiers, since that, that is the most current example. Right. And you know, somebody new to the game has no idea what the Starfall Starfall Islands are, or if they've ever been there, or who Amy Knuckles and Tails are, and what their relationship is to the Sonic. So his interactions with each of them informs you who they are and what their connection is. So Sonic sees Amy. He is deeply concerned about her condition being trapped in the weird cute ball thing. So you understand that he knows her. He cares for her to some degree and wants to rescue her. So they clearly have a positive connection. As the story goes on, he is increasingly worried about her overextending herself in her ghost-like form. And she's saying, I don't care about my safety. We need to protect all these others, which tells you how selfless she is and how concerned he is for her. Mm -hmm. Likewise with Knuckles, you have them kind of constantly picking at each other and tossing backhanded compliments or little snide remarks. But then the minute Sonic is in actual peril, Knuckles is going to punch a kid in the face to save the blue boy. <laughs> that tells you that, you know, they're bros. They're tight. They will, you know, bicker till the sun blows up, but they will always have each other's back. It's informed through the story. And then their interactions will get to the point where it almost feels like you're trying to make them actually into something more <laughs> than just bros, Ian. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I mean, that was pretty funny <laughs> when, <laughs> when that came up. I'm like, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I see it. I get it. I get it. I really do. <laughs> uh, no, nah, they're brothers, man. Sonic and Tails and Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah, they're 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 up, man. They're bros. They're both willing to punch kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's a question from Daventhal. I've noticed quite often that Tangle's tail seems to have fingers on it. There's even a panel in the Tangle and Whisper Mini where the end of her tail is just straight up an actual fist. Is that just artists having fun, or is it, like, actually part of the in-universe lore? Here's the thing. When we were initially designing her, the concept was that it would be kind of like a hand, but not, like, fully articulated. Yeah. So that it would be kind of a visual joke that it's like a third fist, but it would just be a tail. But as time went on, <laughs> that changed and it just became more of a fun visual thing. And it fit her character to have this playful yep. third, almost semi-intelligent appendage. And I kind of knew it was going to go that way. You know, it's like we're introducing this aspect to her. I can see where the fun is. Let's start at the basis where it's just a tail with some kind of features and when it inevitably kind of gets flanderized, we, it will have been earned. We aren't starting off with a you know hand to tail. We'll get there. I, I, I. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's in character. She, her tail is extremely tactile and uh, almost has a bit of a mind of its own. It doesn't actually have a mind of its own, right? It's not sentient no, 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 in no. terms of no, no, no. <laughs> separate separate from her, at least. Okay. <laughs> please no, if, don't, please don't ever, go that far <laughs> no 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 if we ever do anything like have her do rock paper scissors with her own tail that's her just goofing around that's what i was wondering like, okay. like if she starts having a conversation with her tail and making it nod back to her like a hand puppet that's her just being goofy it doesn't <laughs> actually have a mind of its own darn <laughs> although still yes i i want this but also no i don't want this i, I don't know how i feel about this. <laughs> all right here's a question from chonky pancake well it's not really a question i guess this isn't much of a question per se i just kind of wanted to say that you're appreciated and that i hope that hateful stuff that you that has been circulating around twitter hasn't been pestering you too much i guess it's normal to gain a few haters along the way You've been up to some pretty cool stuff recently, so I guess people just want to find something to complain about. Anyway, I hope you're having a good day. 
Well, I guess I will finish off with a small question. What has been the funniest Sonic misinformation tweet you've seen recently? Kyle can answer too. Thanks. Maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> First off, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And if anything, what bothers me more is it kind of perpetuates this idea that the Sonic fandom is especially toxic and nasty. And mm-hmm. there are a few choice individuals, let's say. But for every one of them, I see three to five more saying, what are you on about? Stop. No. And the vast majority of interactions I have are positive and creative and passionate in all the good ways. So, yes, there are problems within the fandom. There are in any. But I think this show itself is a testament of just how much fun and chill is in the fandom. So, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of nastiness is there, but there's so much more good around that. And I would prefer if we focus on that, not deny, you know, it's, it's, it serves no one to turn a blind eye to the problems that exist, but don't dwell on them. And also keep in mind, this is Twitter. It is the smallest of grains within the greater consciousness. There's so much more outside of Twitter. (laughs) And honestly, the straight up like nasty, nasty haters, I have an easier time dealing with because like, oh, you're just crazy. Okay. It's almost kind of funny. Bye. Pretty much. (laughs) It's the ones that come at me with like the arrogance. It's like, my opinion is correct. And if you were a professional, you would understand why. And it's like, see, if I weigh in on this, it's going to sound like I'm just dismissing you out of hand. And that makes me look unprofessional. Mm, you are a trap nope 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 <laughs> not going there that's it's bait. been 17 years i've learned my lesson <laughs> that's <bait>. almost <laughs> yeah i know i know i know I, I i sometimes get get baited too it's it's annoying <laughs> uh that's bait that's bait in, in terms of funny misinformation nothing immediately springs to mind oh. Oh, yeah, I don't really want to call out anything. I, yeah, just because bringing it up here then has the chance to perpetuate it and keep it going, even if it's we're calling it out as incorrect or misinformation. It's still like, eh, 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 eh. All right, here's one from Chaos Sonic 1. Since chaos is an element in Sonic and the opposite of chaos is order, will there be any special gems based off those? I hope not. We have too many glittery items running around, and I have contributed to that. I fully admit that. I mean, we got the Chaos Emeralds, we got the Solar Emeralds, we got the Time Stones, we got Phantom Ruby, we got Warp Topaz, we got uh, the the Force Jewels, we got Precious Stones, and that's just off the top of my head. We don't need Order Diamonds or whatever. Order Diamonds. (laughs) Order now. (laughs) More gems for Rouge. (laughs) (laughs) She wants you to come up with more gems. <laughs> yes, they will all be mine. <laughs> all right. Here's a question from Batman 69 Law. What if Eggman did a preemptive strike on Starline and took him out after he gave Surgeon Kip powers and erased their memories, but before he implemented their new personality? Would Eggman welcome another Sonic clone and a pal to his empire, or would he just discard them? If the former, how different would their personalities be if he would make even make any changes to Starline's plans for them? Assuming that he even knew that Starline was working on him, this incarnation of Eggman doesn't really seem to be that inclined to mold individuals. Like, Infinite is the outlier. He's kind of the weird one. And you know what? Maybe that is the, you know, the example. And he's like, well, Infinite was a bit of a dud, but if I could do better with these two, hmm. I've just counter-argued myself in the middle of a sentence again. <laughs> I, I, this is I don't like, know. This is like Tangle playing rock, paper, scissors with her own tail. I'm arguing with my own brain. I don't know if he would uh, care because if he dropped a bomb on Starline, he probably would have ended up dropping it on Surgeon Kid at the same time, too, just by sheer collateral yeah, bom- damage. Possibly. So I don't know if any of them would have survived. Unless, you know, Eggman invited Starline up for a reconcile, uh, to reconcile yeah. with a drink and then 
you know, oops, you just happen to be standing on the alligator pit. <laughs> and he's going through Starline stuff. It's like, oh, brainwashed doll children with powers. I could either I could just as easily see him let them wander off into the woods or turn them into weapons. But let's see. It, let's. I guess the key thing is, does he have Starline's notes? Like, does he have his extremely meta examination of the universe? Because I could see him finding some appeal in creating another anti-Sonic to some degree. Like, Metal Sonic is the, you know, cold-driven killer. But here's somebody else who could do it on kind of like a squishy, fleshy side of things. That may, that might be fun for a laugh. I don't know. Hmm. I think there's a, a few ways you could approach it, and all of them are appealing. Hmm. I just, I, I, the thing is, I don't see Eggman being as personally manipulative. He, he isn't that, he doesn't have the finesse for torturous things like that. He is very big and bold. You know, he took over the deadly six with the conch, which is just, you know, blow a note and cause them to have an aneurysm. <laughs> there was no, like, you know, he's not toying with their sense of self. He is not demeaning them on a personal level it's just you're out of line beep shot collar <laughs> the um, ultimate brown note <laughs> oh, god <laughs> <sighs> and even with infinite it was like you know huh you're this crazy nihilistic dude i could snuff you out or i could plug some crazy doodad into your chest and make you into a living weapon that's fun go kill sonic for me He's very direct, so I don't know how much programming he would do with Surge and Kit unless he did just, like, whip up some code and just straight download it into their brain. So it would be less manipulation and conditioning than Starline did, but it would certainly be more effective. Starline sends we spends weeks trying to groom these two into the perfect weapons, and Eggman's like, eh, 30 minutes of code. There, you hate Sonic. <laughs> It's really not hard. Uh, Starline is too much of a tryhard. He was really trying hard. Yeah. He tried too hard. What do you mean you program them in C++? <laughs> How does that even work? <laughs> Look at the code if you want. My God, he's a genius. <laughs> uh, come on, Ian, get with the times. It's not C++ anymore. It's like C Sharp. <laughs> I'm serious. He, he I think that's what it's called. <laughs> He's doing uh, retro coding because they're retro style. They're based off the glitch characters. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. It's well, another they, meta joke. No, no, no. That's they, all I know how to do. No, then they should. Be, well, yeah, but then, they, <laughs> 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 but then they'd be written in assembly because that's what the okay. games were originally written in was assembly. Ah, there yeah, you go. not there C plus plus. It was assembly back in the back in those days, in the old days. <laughs> Oh uh, man! Apparently, assembly really sucks too. Oof. All right, here's one from Andrew D. Are Sigma or any other Scrapniks a threat to reverting back to being evil? I'm guessing Mecha Sonic and Mecha Knuckles were harder to reprogram than regular Bandniks, but are easier to reprogram than Metal Sonic. But then, who reprogrammed Sigma? I don't know. A whole island full of adorable hodgepodge Badniks that we have grown to love and cherish as individuals. Wouldn't it be such a compelling shame if something bad were to happen to them in the future? Ian. Almost as if this miniseries set up a foundation that could be revisited by another writer at some point. Ian. I am. I am. Ian. Hmm. Careful. <laughs> careful, with, careful with that knowing smile. You're going to break it. If someone were to capitalize on it, I would imagine Danny would have dibs, but... I don't know. You never know what the future might hold. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Don't don't please don't set Omega loose on Scrapnik Island. Please don't. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure annihilation. <laughs> I thought I thought you were going to say, "Come with me if you want to die." <laughs> 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 All right, one last question from Alpha Mod or Yukon. Crossover time, Tangle, Whisper, Jewel, Surge, Kit, Mimic, Rough, and Tumble have been turned into the new roboticized masters. What kind of gimmick stages and master weapons would they utilize against the Blue Bomber? 
Okay, this is fun and all, but we really need to put some kind of moratorium on these what if characters. Let's limit it to like three. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it, it, you gotta have eight robot masters to be fair. I know. So I, I get the spirit of the question. No, I but know. it is a lot. It is a lot. I know. I know. I get it. All right. So Tangle Woman obviously has the Tangle Tether. Reach out, grab somebody, fling them into a wall full of spikes. Mm-hmm. That's no good. And that would amount to Mega Man getting the grapple beam. When you get down to it, uh, Whisper would be broken. This all get out because she has five weapons. <laughs> like she is the robot master lineup. So uh, <laughs> I feel like she's like the Wily boss, <laughs> like the yeah, seriously. one of the Wily stage bosses, <laughs> more so than her own individual stage. I guess. I mean, every single Wisp is a weapon right there. You know, pretty much. Like, yeah, she would be the. I don't know. She might be the vil- main villain, actually. She'd take over. <laughs> I mean, you could maybe nerf it a bit by having it cycle through shots, so each shot is one. Even, That'd be really obnoxious to play. It, yes, and even then you could exploit that. Yeah. You would so exploit Whisper that. Just, Whisper is bad game to side. She would break it. Yeah. Uh, Jewel, I don't have a clever name for it, but it's Flight. You know, that's her whole thing. She flies. We had a jewel man, so I guess we had to have a jewel woman, but... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just, you know, free flight. Uh, God, which... Basically Super Mega Man, I guess. Yeah, essentially. Or Beetle Woman. Uh, surge Woman. I mean, that gives you power surge, obviously. <laughs> zappy Zappy. Electro Dash that just clears anything in its way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kit Man. <laughs> Kit Man. <laughs> Kit Tsunami Man. Um, see, I almost want to say like just a tidal wave that just <laughs> sends out a rush that clears out anything in front of you because Mega Man's very simple. This is like wave wave right. man power. That's what just wave man, isn't it? Eh, it maybe Neptune. you can vary it up with like it's uh you hold down the button for different effects. Single shot fires off a wave. Hold it down, you get like climby arms or something. But then that runs adjacent to the tank. I, I think that might be too much. To never make things more complicated. I don't know. Uh, Mimic Man is it's Axel. Yeah. You get down. Actually, yeah, yeah. Turn into enemies that are part of that tile set. They don't aggro. There you go. Uh, and then for the big finale, you turn into whatever wily boss is up against him. You just have the two bosses fight each other. <laughs> and, then... and rough and tumble. I like how it's listed. Rough. And tumble as a singular unit. It's a rough well, and tumble man. I mean, they are. He's a rough and tumble man. <laughs> rough and tumble man. But like, let's see. Maybe they have fused together. Maybe that's what happens. <laughs> they mega that's merge. Gross. I don't like that. Gemini man. They like Gemini man. They share one brain. <laughs> no, they share one brain cell. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, like, the thing is, they do have very different move sets like they were envisioned to be like mini bosses right and rough is the more nimble one and he's got the cloud that he generates the purely nondescript non bodily function cloud of course <clears throat> what would that even be as a power like you don't really unless you can like maybe it would be something that's not really great for stage use but it's good for bosses you pump out a few toxic clouds and they cause damage over time. Mm-hmm. Whereas Tumble's ability, like just a straight up big fisted double lariat, would be easy to clear out minor enemies around, but like ridiculously impractical against bosses. Mm-hmm. That'd be a nice trade off between the two. <laughs> hmm. Maybe, maybe. Toot toot, Rockman Warrior. Ah, oh, God. Hmm. <laughs> I've actually seen some robot master designs of uh of some of the characters and they're like really cool. I like the ideas. So I'm glad that that legacy continues. Yep. Very cool. So that's gonna wrap us up for this episode of the Bumblecast. But before we go, we need to give a big thank you to all our patrons over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, kofi.com slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members. Big thank you to Daniel H., Jennifer R., James K., John B., Robotnikom, Sam Cybercat, Samuel P., Torchbound, Mike B., Andrew D., Dave M., Salucha Cat, J. Frost, Coupling Crew, 128, Noni, Do As Diz Den, Hero of Life 13, Professor Scruffy Matt, Chris A., Sony, Triforce Riku, 
John Ann, Sonic, 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 Scurvy Pirate Hog, Jib, Ben Wolfsbane, Lisa M, Lee HK, Invade Turbotunus, Arc Fighter, Chevelle, Keeper of Monsters, Axis, Twilight, Xander, and the Painter, Z Broadcast, Chaos Sonic 1, Starlight Sec, Tick Tick, Jonathan D, The Disgain, Ink Thinks, The Name is X, Cameron H, Slayer Stain, Nimmer Godzilla, Nondal, Jolene B, Yuma 221, Ava Arctic Dove, Just a Mountain Soul, Justin S, Nova Poly Duo, Daddler the Dalek, Alex GS, Joshua S, Sonic Legacy, Jennifer H, Pedanti Cat, Les, Red the Super Namek, Alphamon, or You Can Chat, Omega Watch, Jack the Animator, Wildcard 717, Mancher, J the Redneck of the Stars, and Tails, Angela V, Derusival, Mabius, Genzel, Preston M, Endben, Sammy S, Noah M, Kojira Highwind, Awesome Cakesers, Super Sonic Fan, Miles the Prower, Navare, Exodal, Agent Kaz, Radry, Sonic 84, Puppy the Scholar, Chase L, Four Sonic Fan, Touch of the Wise, Rhythm Raccoon, Domino AU, Wheelie Doe, Sandra B, H, Pig Dan 20, The Marble Gardener, Aiden S, Oz Jam, Shimmy M, Quirly Quills, Smiley 21 in Zephyr Sterling Sonic Philip is Cold Congo Wind Skull Supernova Superior Pizza Sonic Padge Subliminal Gino the Puppet Miggy Sawdust Thick Off Crooker Vlad E200 Paragon Razor The Crucified Devil Loop De Loop Omega Man 21 Thievius Dominic the Raccoon Planet Breezy Lemur Chicken V Nuss Bleeding Thumbs 97 Luke R Unity Kedrian Lori L Jason G Cody G Michael P Nils Illegal Chow Fights Miss Nazumi SB My Fish Eats Rocks The ID Card Philip C Jonathan F. Hip Kid Brick, Levi C. Amazing, Samoth S. Dead Air, OK, Cheese Stick, Adrian W. Zaylock, Nebula Noob, Lacey M. Lucky Lightsheet, Spiral, Knuckle Sandwich 87, Tetsu Knife, Raccoon Shinobi, Normal Person, Marcy H. Caswell, Mr. Moida Boyd, the Giant Moidalizing Boyd, Morless, Pickly Pack, M. Blewett, Native Nerd 27, Miles Full, Prower, Cool Christy 1, Ultra Guy, Krabo, Slato 02, Noob 600, Sonic Mania 2099, Hadronis, Paley, Ashter, Tender Heart Fawn, Liam B., M. Mr. M. Turbo, Loose, Roko D, Sheen, Noah I, Emmy, Quezel J, Guts, Jihan S, Snow Pear, The Man of Multimedia, Fluffy93, Mr. Snippy, Call Me Ryan, All Peachy, Jamal S, Wheels282, Hedgehog, Meta Mode, Frost the Hobbiton, Danny the Light, Buttered Noodles, Miles Per Hour, DL, Technopata, True Cosmic, DigiLabs79, Sunblister16, Travis H, The Internet Person, Saving Throws, Many Hats, Devonthal, and Tyler M. Thank you so much, everybody, for your incredible support and the fact that there are so many freaking names on that list. Are we going to have to come up with some other way for to to, to shout out folks? Are we just going to have to do like maybe once a month or whatever? Something we'll have to figure out for them. I don't know, man. It's uh, a lot. I'm still remaining conscious while I read these. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> okay. If you insist. People are suggesting that we make the title scroll, that we make the names the scroll on the video, but it would only be in the video version, guys. What about the podcast version where you don't have a video? Hmm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumpcast. See you in the next one. Nobody listens to podcasts anymore, says Desirak. Uh-huh, says you listening to a podcast. All right. Well, that's gonna... Yep. Are you going to end up the show? Am I wrapping up the show? Who's wrapping up the show? I don't know. I, I, I think we're on a slight delay here. <laughs> quite possibly, quite possibly. If you're at all familiar with Journey to the Wesp, I, I can't talk, I swear. <laughs> You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T-Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, mp3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Way to leave me hanging on that 06 one, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was legit confused what you were getting at. Yeah, I know. I know. I guess I and was. And then as you, being... as you explained it, you started twisting further and further in the wind. It's like, ah, well, that's the funny part of the joke. I'll just let it go. Oh, okay. Okay. I you... gave you enough rope. <laughs> you gave me, yes. Then I tied it around my neck and jumped. Be our pinata kai, <laughs> Yeah. Spill all the laughter candy. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs>